Okay, so going back to yesterday's visit with FBI, um, I'm a little calmer now, so I can, I'm, I'm not as truculent sounding. And uh, uh, there are a couple of things that I left out in yesterday's video that I want to mention in this video. So my phone suddenly works, okay? And yesterday I showed every time I pressed camera, I, I got a um, storage full alerts where when I clicked on that message, all these apps showed, right? Today, when I click on camera, it works. Here, it, it, it does what it's supposed to do. And there's no long list of apps that just came out of nowhere I've never seen before. So yesterday's visit, on my way to FBI, a couple of things. I was obstructed from, uh, uh, I was delayed because I, the, the end train direction on my Google said that um, it went straight to City Hall when in fact it did it. And uh, so that took a little longer. I was detoured out, uh, for a bit, but uh, no big deal. Um, while I was on the train, I, wa I, I tried to look up the uh, address uh, to FBI again. And this is what showed on my iPhone. Just look at the screen. Okay, that's harassment right there. That pop, that thing that just popped up. So I'm gonna just rewind it. You see those lines shaking? That's a sign of malware. And the other thing I wanted to show So this, uh, this is another Subway ad, and this is for metroplus.org, and it lists all these healthcare organizations, uh, Quest Diagnostics, CityMD. Those are two organizations I posted on my ex showing influenced websites, and Influence websites are the same people repeating over and over and over on uh, different websites. So, uh, NYU, I know, is hijacked. Basically, this is, it looks like metroplus.org uh, is either partnered with all those organizations that they can direct patients to them, or in some way, they're, they, they represent or they're partnered with these organizations. And uh, it's kind of like the organization CableTV.com that represents seven telecom companies. It's, this is a similar setup. But I'm, uh, pro I, I believe all these organizations are hijacked. So by the time I got to FBI, um, which is at 26 Federal Plaza, I went in the building and then you walk down this ramp and there's a bunch of security guards standing around and you have to take off your jacket, like I said in my uh, video yesterday, and you have to take off your shoes. And what's remarkable is just the hostility that they give you. And reflecting back on it now, I believe that they knew who I was. Um, and I say that because the guy was just so combative. He was so rude. And he actually, and I was just stunned. I was just stunned at how I was being treated. Um, and he, that, that I kind of just froze. And he asked, don't you speak English? Like he said that to me, which is to me kind of like, if you want to say racist, that's a little rude and racist. Um, but I was just so like windswept from just being so 
treated in this manner. And you have to put your arms up and face the wall and then they scan you. Um, and then they, you know, but he was doing it. I feel like in a way that was kind of tormenting me, like he was deliberately trying to, um, you know, I, I was, I was there at least over five minutes in this process. And I saw other people, uh, maybe they were workers, uh, though they were being scanned, nowhere near as scanned as I was. Um, and, and just how like angry he, he appeared. And again, just uh, very hostile towards me. And uh, I, I was just so stunned that I wasn't even able to say yes to his, don't you speak English? Um, and then after that, he didn't tell me where to go. He didn't say, well, wh where are you going that I can tell you where the, uh, to go? So when I went through the security uh, machine and, and was out in the main foyer, um, I didn't know if I had to go to the elevator. I didn't, there's no sign directing to FBI. So then another security guard steps out as though watching me, he had, he, as though he had been watching me looking around, trying to find an, a, a sign directing me to FBI. And he, like he said, where he, he, he poked his head out from one of those security machines and said, where are you going? And I said, FBI. And then he pointed to where that was. Um, so that tells me that, you know, because although it wasn't busy, it wasn't like there was a long line of people entering the federal plaza. Um, it's like they were watching me. And in fact, after my ordeal with the security guard, I heard them laughing. They were, it felt like they were laughing at me. Um, like immediately, as soon as I left, as soon as I went through the, the uh, security machine and went in the main foyer, I heard them laughing. They were all laughing. And then, um, so, and as I'm walking around trying to find where to go for FBI, and then the, the one security guard pokes out his head and tells me it's that way, um, I go walk down the, the corridor and uh, there, I see the booth where, um, the that's adjacent to the to the main office and then there's the the person that represents fbi that uh takes complaints and th that's this is what that looks like right here so there is like there's the booth and there's the phone where you talk to the person behind the glass window And there's obviously there's cameras everywhere. It's a federal building. And I was standing, I, there were two people ahead of me and the one person took a while. So I was standing in line for a, a good 10, 15 minutes. So, you know, without, at the risk of sounding paranoid, I wouldn't be surprised if they saw me um, standing in line because what happened was eventually when it was my turn, and there were the guy in front of me, there's so the two people in front of me was one the female was at the window, and then the, there was a guy in front of me. And I actually um the guy said something to me and we struck like a small talk. Uh, we we struck a bit of small talk, and I had asked him, is does it usually do you does it take usually take this long to, to to make your complaint or whatever? Because he had mentioned he comes once a week for something. I I forgot what he said. But um, he said, no, sometimes yes, sometimes no. And then I mentioned to him, um, the security guards were uh, incredibly nasty. Did, are they normally like that? Did you, go, did you have to go through the process of uh, taking your uh, shoes off and everything else? And he said, yes. And he said, they're always, they're always nasty, but, um, you know, that, that's just how they are. So, you know, and that's true. Um, I'm not too surprised that it's it's like law enforcement. They're they're kind of combative at times. So that's not too big of a deal. But I can't help but uh, think that it's related to uh, these people kn know that I'm going to FBI. It turns out that they can track me on this phone and that they can influence this phone. And I ha usually have when I have this phone on me, I don't turn it off. I don't power it off because I didn't think they could trace trace me on this phone. But it turns out they could. So. Um, that tells me they knew my every move. Okay. So 
Now I want to play one of the videos and just to sh give an idea of how um, I kept turning this phone's camera on. So that didn't record anything. You can't hear what the guy is saying because he's in the glass and I'm talking to him over the phone. So I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to delete that video rather. And that's how short this video is that it doesn't even play anything. So I'm going to delete this one as well. And same thing with this video. So every time I, I kept pressing record, it just, the storage alert full pop up came up. So that's what's happening. And that's, I'm pressing play, record, but then boom, that alert showed, making, obstructing this video. And that's what the form looks like. That's it. Okay, so this is this video is four minutes long, and it, it documents part of my conversation with the FBI. You can't, although not the part that I mentioned yesterday, where he tells me that it would take like fifty uh, such complaints for them to do anything. And then contradicts himself some uh, like a minute later, saying we get a thousand. I think that part is actually here, but you don't actually you don't hear him um, saying that. You hear my response to that. Um, so what happened was when it was finally my turn to approach the window, there was an officer, um, a particular officer wearing a, a a police uniform that was handling that handled the. The, the two people ahead of me. And then he motioned to me this, like one minute. And that's when, and I, I said, okay, you know, I, I motioned back like, okay, fine. Um, or gave a nod of, nod of my head. And like maybe a minute or two later, someone else came out from um, somewhere and took over. And reflecting on that now, it's like, maybe the guy went on break Maybe he intended to come back, but that I don't know. Maybe they knew who that it was me um, making a complaint, and then someone else took over. I don't know, but it's interesting to me that um, you know the the guy who had been handling the guy who handled the, the the two people ahead of me had motioned one minute like this, and then I nodded my head, and a, a, a minute later someone else came in in the booth. So. Um, that could have, you know, that, that could be that he just, it was just his that shift or whatever. Um, or it, the, the other possibility is that someone else took over because they knew that it was, it was me that was making a complaint. So now I'm going to play this video and I won't be surprised because again, they can track, it turns out they can trace me on this phone. They can influence this phone and all the, the, you know, the entire building has cameras and I'm convinced that they can um, because they, the, the, it's a it's a critical infrastructure. If they can do Con Ed, my my uh, kitchen lights that I don't even turn on anymore. Um, the only t light I turn on in my kitchen is the is the light above the uh, stove. That's it, and I've been doing that for the past two months. Um, and if they can do uh, everything else that they do, like internet, I'm, I'm sure they can do surveillance cameras as well. So here's the, uh, oh, this is the only video that records part of the conversation that I had with the, uh, with, with the FBI agent. Uh, 
this. They, they've done everything from identity theft to stealing money in my accounts. Yeah, since to, actually since 2021. It all started with spyware. And then um, I, 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 I could tell my devices were compromised. And then, um, you know, but I didn't really think of any, anything of it until I saw that I was being defrauded in my bank account. And then I reported it to Chase. Yeah, I should have reported it to Chase, but they, they said that, you no, know, they said it was too late, that they couldn't refund me. But, um, you know, so uh, the point is now it's gotten to that they're contacting people, everybody I know, like my roommate, my ex-boyfriend, my employers. They're, um, I'm asking people, are you getting my emails and texts? I'm calling you, I'm texting you, and they're saying no, they don't, they don't get anything. T-Mobile, and I document all this, so it's, you know, yes, everybody, I, 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 yes, I think that was like one of the first things I said is, hey, my devices are compromised, what do I do in this situation? I've called Apple, which is my app, because I have an iPhone. They don't do anything. I mean, I feel like this is an FBI situation. Do I not, like, report it to you guys? I can't report it here in person because it doesn't go through. Since I'm here, I can't make a handwritten note or something. I can't. Yeah, I, well, that's what I'm saying. I'm trying to say I can't do it on my devices. So since I'm here, can I write a report? I don't have the funds to do that. They're stealing money from me left and right. So. And that's it. So at that point, he asked me for my ID, and I have to put it through the slot, and then he gives me that form to fill out to make the uh, complaint. Um, so, you, so you heard in the video, uh, my he's asking me all these questions, like, did you call Verizon? Did you call T-Mobile to report all this? And it's like, hello, yeah, that's you know, that's not that, that's that's common sense to do that. But it, it, it's it's the pushback that I I've seen at NYPD. It's uh, the the it's there's this. I don't it's I don't know how to describe it, but you're, you're I'm just it's amazing that you're I'm telling this person that to me serious crimes are happening to me, and he's like, well, you need to call um you know you need to call Cha you, you need to call your bank you need to call apple you need to freeze your uh, social security number he even suggested to hire a private investigator and i don't have the money to do that when, especially when i'm being defrauded um you know $900 for con ed uh now i have my rent to worry about while i'm and i also mentioned that i'm being obstructed from seeking employment and still that didn't make any kind of impression on him whatsoever like he li literally he he made me feel like that this is just how my life is now and I'm gonna to have to accept that. 
um, you know, like he wasn't being rude about it. He wasn't hostile like the security guard was, but he was just being completely, um, you know, the pushback is like, and he kept referring me to the online website to make a complaint while I'm there in person. And as I'm telling him, my I'm that I'm being terrorized through my devices and that I'm being, you know, which includes obstruction. I, if I can't seek employment um, on my computer, uh, I'm, I'm not going to be able to make an FBI IC3 report either. And I've tried. And so I'm telling, I'm just repeating myself over and over. And he just keeps repeating, telling, repeatedly telling me, uh, directing me to the FBI website. And until I, as you heard, I'm, I'm like insisting on making an appointment there while I'm there. And he finally gives in. But that's what my experience was like. And it was totally bizarre. And uh, there's no doubt in my mind that FBI is corrupt. And, um, and it, it makes sense because everything is corrupt, uh, it, 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 I feel like. Um, not everybody may be in these organizations, and they're probably just following orders. Like he actually said at one point, um, I'm just the conduit to his own minimization. So, you know, it's not, it's not inconceivable. It's, it's a nightmare, to, but it is what it is. And that is, there's a lot of corruption going on.